Health Matters with Karen Key. Well, Max Dog is the story of a golden retriever who becomes a rock of emotional support for his owner after she faces a series of devastating life events that plunge her into deep depression. Years later, the tables are turned, however, and the roles are reversed when Max is diagnosed with a cancer that finally took his life. Max's owner, Carol Mole, joins me now, and Carol let me know this morning that we will be joined this evening by her blogging friends from around the world who will also be tuned in to listen to us from New Zealand and Australia, Scotland, Michigan, Tennessee, across the United States, France, the Netherlands, Germany, etc., etc., she said. So obviously there's lots more. And some of them are even in Malaysia and the Philippines and they're getting up in the middle of the night or the very early morning to listen in. And these are bloggers who have followed the Max Dog journey, home, some since the blog's inception, and they're dying to hear Carol's voice for the first time. Carol, welcome. Welcome to the show and welcome to your blogger friends around the world. Hi there, Corinne. Thank you very much for having me on your show. It's the first time on radio and I'm rather nervous, I must say. Well, I hope that the, the, the spirit of Max will be with you and I'm sure you'll be just fine. Yeah, thank you very much. Carol, it's the most heartwarming story. It's, it starts off, I think, in the very beginning of your book, um, which is called Max Dog, where you, this was your husband actually that wanted another dog because you already had two. That's right. Yes, um... He had always wanted a, a large dog in his life, and I had been accustomed to two small Maltese terriers that were always pretty manageable. Um, and with a tightly run household, I, it was the last thing on my mind. I definitely did not want another dog. <laughs> and he got the dog, and it turned out to be Max, who was the most gorgeous puppy, and off Max went for training. And uh, due to time and work and all sorts of things, you ended up doing most of the training, and Max eventually became yours. That's right, yes. Um, You know, it was a love-hate relationship. When that little puppy arrives on your doorstep, your heart just melts. You have have puppy breath and all the exuberance of and the joy of life that that is is just contagious. Um, But it was really an effort to, to give a gift to my husband, a gift of this large dog. And I knew that it was going to need training, and I knew it needed grooming and walking and all those sort of things that... um, um, that mean responsible pet ownership, and I also knew that my husband might not be able to full, fulfill that role. So as the weeks went by, um, that is exactly what happened, and he asked me to stand in for one or two of his um, training sessions, which I did very reluctantly. Um, and it was it was really hard to to adopt this new mindset of um, you know of dog training, but over over the um, the time. Um, my husband actually stepped out of that role and um, Max became mine. He had firmly adopted me. And Max pretty much changed your life from that point on. I mean, you ended up showing him. He was doing very well in shows. Beautiful, beautiful dog. The photographs are magnificent. <laughs> but he, yes. pretty, he pretty much changed your life from that point. Um, yes. You know, I had two young daughters that I um, was looking after. I was a stay-at-home mom. Well, I am a stay-at-home mom or right at this point, um, but I had dedicated my life to my family. I wanted to create this perfect family, and I'd effectively turned myself into, um, into super mom. Um, I filled up every moment of the day, um, and my cup was absolutely full. Max was um, an, an item in my life that pushed me right to the edge um, of this tension that, I, that had prevailed in my life throughout those years. Um, yes, and he, he he stayed by my side. He watched me. He never let me out his sight. Um, he was pretty amazing at that point before I actually fell into depression. And you, the two dogs you had, um, one was getting on a little bit in, in years, I think. It wasn't too didn't really mind terribly much that Max had arrived, but there was King Toffee, was it? <laughs> That's right, and he is still with us, by the way. He's 14 going on 15 this year. <laughs> he didn't seem too impressed initially. Um, yes, that, that is a big thing. You know, having small little dogs, they're pretty manageable. And I knew nothing about dog training when I originally got them. And one of the most important things which dog trainers will tell you is to socialize your animals. And he had no socialize, socializing. He had, he had appointed himself king of the household. He ruled the roost. He was my young daughter's little dog. Um, and when this puppy arrived, who happened to be the same size as him, he he was um, his territory had been violated and he took great offence to this. He attacked Max on that very first day. 
Um, and the tension actually built for quite a while to the point of the day which they actually um, resolved it, which I share in my book. And then in 2004, there was quite a major turning point in your life. Um, that's right. You know, um, it was, I think people who, who uh, first of all, this book is not, I'm not hoping to speak on behalf of the many people around the world that suffer from depression. It's a personal um, journey for you, Carol. That is right. Mm. It's, it's my personal story. Um, and having, writing this book had allowed me a lot of introspection to try and see what were the causes that had, had um, uh, initiated this, this had tipped me over and made me fall into this hole. Um, I had always been an anxious person, and I'd only realized this during my therapy. Um, I'd always been an obsessive-compulsive person um, to fill as much as I could in my day. But it took a series of devastating life events to actually tip me over the edge. Um, My husband suddenly resigned. We had no income at the time. I had two exchange students in my household, which effectively meant eight miles at times that we had to feed. Um, I had to relocate my mother from a rural area and find a, a new place for her. She'd suffered from illnesses, and my time was also dedicated to her, to uh, various medical practitioners as, as, and so forth. And then the final straw in it was that my best friend committed suicide. And what happened then? Well, I was absolutely numb. I was totally shocked at, at this. I knew she'd been depressed, but... Suicide was the last thing that I thought she would she would tackle, and I collapsed on the floor that day that I heard i I just dissolved into an absolute pit of grief um, in the days that followed, I tried to keep my life as normal as i I could I um, went about my various errands and so forth. but one particular day, which I also share in the book i was I, I didn't have the children in the car but I suddenly woke up, if you like, and discovered that I had veered towards the pavement and nearly caused an accident. Um, and that was a big shock to me. Um, in, the week, in, in the weeks that followed, I suffered palpitations and I started shaking, had various headaches and um, so forth. And I went to my, my normal GP, who affirmed to me that I wasn't going to have a heart attack. But this was probably an indication of anxiety and depression and that I should seek counselling. So that is what I did. And then at some point throughout all of this, you decided to keep a journal. Look, in my own journey to healing, because that's what MaxDog is really about, Mm. it's it's sharing my journey to healing, um, there were five ingredients which were my recipe, my personal recipe to healing. The first one was that I had to accept that I had this condition. Um, you know, depression, anxiety are taboo subjects. Um, they have lots of social stereotypes surrounding them. Um, and it's very hard to actually admit. But if you admit it, you then can move on to the next step. And my second um, recipe to, um, to healing was to seek medical help from my GP who then started a course of medication for me. The third recipe was that I needed counseling. And with these three things um, in play over a period of two years, um, it was an intensive time, but I started gradually to see the light, and the light meaning to find and discover things that really motivated me and that I could enjoy in life, something that I could enjoy. he, at that point, I had um, uh, signed up to do uh, some courses through UNISA, which is the University of South Africa, and one of them happened to be creative writing. Um, as the course material was coming through to me, I really dedicated my, my mornings to studying, and it was on one morning that I thought I'd try something, and I sat down and grabbed a piece of paper and just wrote down my thoughts, my emotions, in an attempt to clear my head um, for, the studies, uh, for the studies that would follow in the hours ahead. And it did that. I discovered that I could concentrate better. Um, and so I tried it before I went to sleep um, to just write down my emotions, my stories and journal and whatever. 
and discovered that my sleep patterns were much better too. And as the days went by, and I, I continued to do this, I realized that it was having the same cathartic effect as what I was having in counseling. Um, but writing it down, I was enjoying the writing, it was ordering my thoughts, it was allowing me to to reflect on what my thought, where my thoughts had come for, uh, from um, and so forth. Um, yeah, so at that point... I then decided I'd heard about blogging, and I thought, well, what's what's the you know harm in trying this this new thing that was happening on the internet? So I started up a little blog called Perhaps in Time, and my intention there was to create a space, um, a forum for myself, <laughs> where I could go to, where I personally could feel inspired by the things that I wrote. The blogs that I'd seen on the internet. Many of them had been places of deep gloom and doom, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have this place that I could go to and and feel uplifted. It didn't matter that I didn't have any visitors. In fact, for six months, I didn't have any visitors. But that was the the, the basis of, of blogging, of my writing, and my passion for writing. And then the, fourth, uh, the fifth part to my recipe of healing was simply the gift of God, and that was Max Dog, who was by my side during this time. And he used to bump you when you didn't get out of bed in the morning, and he would be with you when you were studying, and he never left your side. I mean, he was literally glued to you throughout all of this, and I'm, from reading in your book, gave you a lot of the strength that you needed, I think, to to get through this time. Yes, he found things where he could get my attention. He, he In the mornings, he would um, go and collect the washing and dump it <laughs> on my lap. Um, one of the most amazing things about this dog is that he learned to say the word mom. Now, if you look at a dog's snout, you'll see that it doesn't, it's not really shaped to make the O sound. And one wonders, now, how did he actually say mom? Well, he started off, he used to moan and say mmm. And then he discovered that if he licked his nose between the mmms, he would effectively produce the mom sound, mmm. <laughs> and he, <laughs> it would absolutely... Um, you know, I would dissolve into laughter when he did this. And he realized this, and he did it more and more. So he was finding all sorts of things that would that would um, make me laugh and, you know, um, get me out of this, this doom um, feeling that I had. I, I, you know, I could not help but smile when he was around. And then came the blog, The Adventures of Max Dog and Max Mom in South Africa. <laughs> and uh, you've made friends all over the world, as I mentioned in the beginning. I mean, they're, they're listening in, hopefully, from all over the place. Yeah. And you, a lot of that as well, that blog, was, I think, a lot of your recovery was through that as well. And through the very sad time, unfortunately, Max passed away from cancer. And I think they held you up through that time as well. Yes, there's... Uh um, a thing in cyberspace, particularly, well, first of all, the dog blogging community is, the way I see it is the internet is a um, a global village, and the dog blogging and cat blogging community is a small suburb within that, that village. Um, and I think what people don't know, many people don't know, that there, there is the most incredibly powerful cyber support group, which is prevalent in cyberspace. Um and I'm talking particularly from within that, uh, that community. What I discovered while I was blogging is that as I was sharing my life, I was having emails behind the scenes of people sharing their lives a little bit more intimately than what was inside the space. And I realized that I wasn't alone. Uh, there were other people, like-minded people around the world that also had this need to share, care, and uplift and to reach out across um, the seas, if you like, to find people that that were, were similar to them, um, and as we blogged and we, you know, we got to know each other's lives, you 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 realise by the tone that is used in a certain blog post that a blogger is struggling. Sometimes it's more blatant, where um, they actually, um, you know, announce that they have a particular problem in their life. Um, but whatever it is, if the bloggers are a part of this thing called the power of the poor. Um, who come to realize that then start demonstrating their love and support for um, this particular blogger that is, is, is struggling. And they do this by going to the comment section within a blog post and then offering messages of upliftment and support. And it's the most incredibly powerful thing to be part of. And 
for me, it is a unique privilege to be that. It is exactly what was delivered to me when I received the news of Max Dog's illness. And um, that is one of the reasons, if not the only reason, why I've dedicated this book to my blogging friends around the world. They mean an enormous amount to me. They are still my cyber support group. And as I said as well in the beginning, it's the first time the ones that are listening now will hear your voice because they've only ever, in inverted commas, heard your voice through your, your blog. Yes, and they're probably commenting right now, that South African accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's fabulous, Carol. Um, I have spoken on Skype to one or two of them. Um, uh, Kathleen Coy, the, the author of the, uh, or the, the artist of the masterpiece, which yes. is the front cover of mm. the book, um, I've only heard her voice telephonically. I haven't actually spoken to her on um, you know, on the internet. But the other blogging friend of mine, Mimi, who's also in the book right at the end, um, I've spoken to her quite often on Skype. And um, she, in, in fact, will be visiting South Africa for the first time in September next year. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And just we, we're coming to the quite close to the end of the interview now, but okay. one thing I need to just say as well is that during Max's life, he was a wonderful ambassador for South Africa as well. Yes, um, you know, there are many people around the world that um, basically are glued to their computers for whatever reason, whether it is a medical reason or an emotional reason or whatever. Um, and they are basically, many of them will, will just be in that little environment for most of their day and never get out, never visit places or whatever. And I just thought it really nice if I could showcase my country a little bit. So I converted Max Dog, the, the character on the blog, which is based on Max, into a cyber tour guide for South Africa. And that's why I called the blog The Adventures of Max Dog in South Africa. I would take them on various tours, introduce them to our culture, our languages, our beautiful um, offerings from a tourist point of view, um, and just do it from the perspective of an a- average normal person from this country. I'm extremely patriotic, I must add. That's great. And what was so nice was towards the end of Max's life, your cyber friends took Max on a world tour. Yes, it's one of the gifts that they gave me on Valentine's Day in 2010, exactly a week after Max Dog was diagnosed. They reciprocated the gesture of um, a, a cyber tour guide. And a total of 42 bloggers around the world collaborated behind my back and shaped blog posts on that day where they effectively um, um, photoshopped pictures of Max Dog into their, their blog posts and they took me on tours of their countries, their environments, their families and showcased their countries just as a loving gesture at a time that I really needed. It was it was really incredible. And that particular thing can be accessed on my blog. Um, it, you just have to scroll down the right hand toolbar of the Adventures of Max Dog and you will be able to visit all those blog posts of um, those uh, bloggers that have done this for me. Carol, it sounds like the most wonderful time was had by you and, and this gorgeous <laughs> dog, Max. Yes. And I wish you all the best and hopefully there'll be a follow-on book. I'm sure we have some lots more to say and <coughs> I'll be looking out for that. So thank you so much for joining me on the show this evening and good luck with the book. Corin, I really appreciate this time with you. Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, and uh, to my readers who maybe like to purchase it, would you be mentioning where? Sure. Uh, well, I've got the Porcupine Press. Is it available in bookshops, specific yes, bookshops? it's available in all the major bookstores. It will be it's inv- available online. It will shortly be online on uh, Amazon.com so my, my international bloggers can breathe a sigh of relief. Um, but they can also uh, buy directly from me if they visit my blog and just follow the um, the advice there on how to get hold of it. Wonderful. Well, I advise everyone who's interested in dogs or the amazing work that dogs like Max do in not even realising, I think, that they're doing it. You need to read this book. It's absolutely wonderful. Carol, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you, Corinne. Thank you very much. And I love to all my blogging friends out there. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully they're all listening. <laughs> Carol Mull is the author of Max Dog. It's published by Porcupine Press. And as she said, if you'd like to find out more about the book, you can take a look at her book her website it's www.theadventuresofmaxdog.blogspot.com and it's available in all leading bookstores